Hey everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College. I'm going to do a video today on the song That's All, and this was really a pretty good video, I think, for beginners. We're in the key of C, so let's take a look at the chords. C triangle 7 is, means C major 7th, and of course that's a major chord with a major 7th on it, not a flat 7. D minor 7th is a minor chord, and it does have the flat 7th flat seven can be found two notes down from the root. Here's the root, D minor, down two half steps. That's a flat seven, and that's what you need for a minor seventh chord. Same with E minor seventh, back to D minor seventh. We've got C major seventh again, and here we see F major seven, sharp 11. Now the melody actually plays the uh, sharp 11, so there's absolutely no need to try to put it into the chord. So let's just play F major 7 like that. And once again, a major 7th chord is a major chord with a regular 7th, not the flat 7. Okay, and the flat 7 can be a white key or a black key. You just look down, look at the root, and go down one step for a regular 7th. And uh, but then we're going back to E minor. Here on A seventh, here it is in root position, and this is the first uh, dominant chord we've had. Um, you know, if it doesn't say major seventh or minor seventh, it is a dominant seventh. So it's a major chord, and the seventh is a flat seven. See, because in A major, that's the scale, so that's the seventh. You know, the regular seventh is just a half step, but this is a this is the uh, flat seven, and that's what makes a dominant chord. So remember this, a major chord, and then two down from the root is that. But we're going to invert this chord, so I'm going to take these two notes and move them down here. So I've got E minor first, and then A7. So I'm just moving two notes down like this. So E minor seventh, A seventh. Okay, F minor seven, flat five. All right. Let's just not talk about it. Let me just show it to you. All right. There it is. And then we're going to F minor. So I'm going to switch a whole bunch of notes here. I'm going to move F, a minor third. My fifth stays the same. And my seventh has to be there. Minor seventh chord and a dominant seventh chord. Both sevenths are what you call flat sevenths. Okay, E minor seventh. See, flat seven. And here's E flat diminished seventh. That's the little circle there. So we got E flat, and the best way to figure these out is it's an equal distance. You go up to there, up to there, and up to there. Okay? So that's a diminished chord. And you know, if it said F sharp diminished, it's really the same chord, you see. So. Uh, and then back to E minor 7th, we're in the first ending now, and our A 7th, we're going to invert that again, and D minor 7th, and we're going to invert the G 7th too. Here's a G 7th, right, a major triad with a flat 7. We're going to take these two notes, move them down here, and from D minor 7th, it's easy to get to. And then the whole thing repeats. So I'll play it again now, and I'm going to put in the melody. This song is often done as an up-tempo. Uh, it says ballad here for a slow song, but, uh, you know, jazz musicians like to play it. They like to play it up-tempo. We'll get to that. You know, take small steps first. So here's the melody. When you have a song like this with two chords in every measure, 
the first chord comes on the first beat, the second chord, play it on the third beat. So there in the first ending, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And, you know, sometimes the chord isn't written quite in the right place, but, you know, just do the math and, and put it on the third beat. Um, a few little things about the A section before we go to the B section. Um, I'll just run through it and explain a few little things that are sometimes done differently. Sometimes that F major 7th is played as a dominant 7th. So just take the triangle away and you have F7. And it's, you know, it's kind of a bluesier sound to it. Now right here you have F minor and the melody there, you know, it's just at the very last part of that measure, so you can get away with doing it, but you could make that a flat or do something like this. instead of A, C there. So, and instead of E minor, you know, if you look at these chords, C major 7th and E minor 7th, they're kind of substitutes for each other. Um, so instead of the E minor, we could just play like a C chord and maybe add the 6th to it. And that goes very smoothly into our diminished chord. And let's go to the second ending. D minor, and we have G7, and you notice I played this instead of the G. I put a flat 9 in there, and I really shouldn't do that in a beginner video like this, but there are some dominant 7th flat 9 chords coming up in the bridge, and we're, we're going to kind of treat them the same way. So uh, let's get there, and then we'll talk about it. And here's our C. It says C6-9, but just a C6 is all we're going to do. Now, in the next section, let me play it a little bit first. You see, you have to kind of get your melody in there and move your chords in and out because, you know, your hands are going to bump into each other. So, there's G minor, 7th, and then here's C, and notice what I did. I've just taken these two notes, move them down a half step, and you say, well, how can that be C7? There's not even a C in that. If you look at this chord, C, and it is a dominant seventh, right? <clears throat> it doesn't say C major seventh or C minor seventh, so it's a C dominant seventh, major triad, flat seven, and here's the flat nine. If you look at it, these four notes, they make a diminished chord. I can invert it this way, this way, and from G minor, I get to that chord very easily. And it gives me that flat nine. So that's the way I'm going to do it. And see, it makes a pretty nice jazz chord there, doesn't it? And on the D seventh, I can do the same thing. You know, you just look for any note of the chord, except for the root, and then make a diminished chord. So you can look at the third of D seventh and make a diminished chord. You can look at A, make a diminished chord. C, make a diminished chord. Even the flat nine, make a diminished chord. So I just went for the third and made a diminished chord like that. And you see D seventh would be this. So instead of the root, we have the flat nine. And going on. The B flat seventh is a good chord to use. It probably should go right there on the fourth beat, like the chart says. We're just going to leave it out. So just play F major seventh again. Then we continue on. And there again, I've got D seventh, kind of a different version this time. But, uh, you know, I, it's a diminished chord. There's the, the fifth of, of D, the seventh of D, 
the third of D and the flat nine of D. And it's so easy when you're doing what's called a two five one uh, to just lower these two notes by a half a step like that. And here's E seventh with a flat nine. See? E, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth. And you know, you might think, well, how can I think about all this stuff when I'm playing? Well, it's like any other piece of music. You practice it enough times that you, you stop thinking about exactly, you know, what exactly what notes you have to play in the chord and what's the third and what's the seventh. You just your fingers get familiar with what you're doing. So from the A minor there on the uh end of the last line here and on to the next couple of lines we've got G major 7th and then E dominant 7th which we're playing as a diminished chord on to A minor same kind of thing again and if I keep moving them down I get D minor 7th inverted right because there's D minor 7th just an inversion and then G 7th I move the bottom two notes down all right let me play the whole bridge for you Back to the A section. There I did the diminished chord for G seventh and I added called a whole tone extension. All right, a little advanced stuff there as an extra added bonus here at the end of the video. Now, for improvisation on this, you know, just use the C major scale, and whenever you have a chord that's got like a black key in it, try to incorporate that a little bit into your improv, and I'll do a little bit just to see if I can uh, do what I'm telling you to do. Two, three, four...
it's not that long of a journey to go from this to this. Just understand what you're doing and take it one step at a time. Practice every day and you will get there. All right, everyone, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment because from what I hear, comments help the uh, algorithm send people to my videos. So that would really help a lot to leave a comment and I really do appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.